So I first came across it, it was actually someone in my book club who took me aside and said, I think I have your next film. And it, Miriam Taves has just written this new book. And I'm a huge fan of Miriam Taves. And so I read the book and I mean, it was pretty instant. I mean, I inhaled that book and I read it so quickly and it it just captivated me. I think what she was trying to peel back in terms of these essential questions around community and democracy and faith and forgiveness and, and how you move forward as a community, um, I was just so taken with it. So it was pretty quick that I started to imagine it as a film. Well, I had read um, Miriam's book, All My Puny Sorrows. I was a big fan of that book. And um, so when I received the script for Women Talking, which I hadn't read and actually hadn't really heard about, um, I, was, I was very excited because it had Sarah's name on it and it had Miriam's name on it. And I, I was, I was, it was just really thrilling to be able to sit down with something like that. And then it was a wonderful ride. I, I, I was so captivated and interested and moved by it. I just felt very honoured to be asked and um, and I, I, I just immediately and instinctively liked August. Um, and I saw him in, he, he feels like quite connected actually to some of Miriam's other male characters. And um, I don't know, I think the way Miriam writes, the way Sarah has written, it's very sympathetic, very human, um, and, and full of, you know, life and humour, and it's wonderful writing, yeah. I think it's really similar in terms of how he is in the film. I think in the book, you know, we go so much more into August's backstory. And originally I had wanted all of that to be in the film and there just wasn't room for it. But it ended up being an incredible resource for the actors to get to read about their histories and their pasts. And so it ended up being not just a document in terms of adapting, but also in the, this incredible research guide for the actors. I mean, so many films I love take place in one location, so I wasn't afraid of that. But I did feel that this film, from reading the book, needed to feel epic and seismic in terms of what it was taking on. And so it became really clear early on it couldn't just be in the hayloft and that we had to have the sense of scope and feel the landscape and the kids and the sense of beauty of the outside world of what they're actually fighting for. I met with her before I started adapting it, just for a really long time, to just ask all the questions I had about the novel and get a sense of what was most important to her. Um, she read uh, two or three different drafts. I would reach out to her quite often about casting and just being able to talk through some of the casting choices. Um, and then, yeah, really, at every stage, there was uh, at least some involvement from Miriam. She was a huge resource to us, also because she's Mennonite. Um, but she was incredibly generous with us and also is one of those novelists who really understands the filmmaking process because she's been involved in filmmaking. She really understands the distance between a book and a film. So it was very safe to involve her in everything because she wasn't in any way precious. There is a line and I'm gonna misquote it a bit. And I don't know exactly why this is important to me, but there's something early on in the book that's to do with another, when, when August has, is out living outside of the community, someone says to him, you, a woman who takes care of him after his mum's passed away, um, says you have an unusually strong need to be forgiven. Mm. And that stayed with me uh, um, as a kind of, um, Something that something that motivates his presence there, yeah.